Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Tuesday. Welcome, welcome. Did you have a good weekend? I hope you did. <laughs> We're back with our classes on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. It's been kind of sunny outside. Did you get a lot of rain yesterday? Hopefully the hurricanes or tropical storms, Marco and the rest of them won't be bothering us too much. So hope you're staying safe where you are. Let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, Ucha Creek, now the Grove Town Library, since now we have a new library and everything. Of course, we're not having any kind of on-ground classes right now. We're all doing our classes virtually, so please spread the word and tell others about our classes. Now, before we start class, the big thing we want to let you know is Beth, definitely feel free to ask any questions. Of course, if you come when the classes are live, yay, <laughs> then of course you can ask questions and stuff. And of course, I'm here to answer them as well. Now, one of the big things is because we switched over from Facebook to YouTube, you remember you do have to be logged into YouTube to be able to post questions. 
and also do comments, like, and subscribe as well. So the big question I usually ask is, how can I help? How can I help? Oh, I see that Dr. Emmy is here. Hey, Dr. Emmy. Glad you're here. All right, so let's talk about what, cla what class we're going to do today and, of course, what classes we have going on the rest of the week and for the rest of the month, too. We're getting close to the end of the month here. So today is Tuesday. It's Tuesday, Tuesday. So today's Tuesday. We're going to be doing Internet Safety and Security. And one of the big ones is, of course, we cover some of these topics in some of the other classes, but to get them all together and also talk about some extra things like bullying, what is a VPN, a little bit more about malware and everything, and of course we get more into phishing scams. And believe it or not, I'll actually get to talk about one I literally got about uh, 30 minutes ago, a phishing scam, pretending that they're Amazon and there's something wrong with my account. So I'll maybe I'll be able to talk about that too. So it's not real. <laughs> Now tomorrow at 11 o'clock we're going to be doing this class again so definitely tell a friend or family member so this is the class in the afternoon and then we're going to do the same class tomorrow at 11 so you can come join me for that live as well. And then at 11 o'clock we're doing that for the Harlem Library so I'll be posting uh, that link on the Harlem Library's Facebook page but do remember if you do subscribe or um, yeah, if you do subscribe to this YouTube channel GCHRL videos do realize that you can watch all our videos on this one channel okay uh, tomorrow afternoon we're going to be doing a fun class yay video creating basics it's a lot of fun we're going to be using the microsoft it's a big long name microsoft uh, photo microsoft windows 10 photos app okay so we'll be editing some videos there, doing some title cards, adding some 3D effects and stuff, special effects, make it snow, stuff like that. So if you're working to um, uh, edit some uh, slideshow you know, or something like that or just some home videos or something, I'll be editing some of our bird videos. So it'll be a lot of fun. So come join me for that. And on Thursday, we're going to be doing a morning and then an afternoon session of Gadget Help with Alex. Oh, so hello, welcome, welcome. So Jane says, I have a problem telling if the email is legit. <laughs> uh, is it uh, from Walmart? Okay, so we'll be talking about that too. Big one is, does it have your name on it? Okay. So tomorrow we'll be doing a, uh, of course, it's a drop-in morning and afternoon, 11 o'clock and then 2.30. So I'll be here hanging out. I'll probably be talking about some of the library stuff that you can uh, use for free but also just come in, ask for tech stuff. So this is Gadget Help with Alex. Uh, this is what we used to do, of course, at the libraries, but we're not having any kind of classes. There's no programs going on in the library right now because we're all staying safe at home. So this is it. So definitely feel free to share with friends and family. Here's our schedule for the rest of the month. Internet safety and security, video creating basics, and our Gadget Help. Now, I do realize these videos are still up and available on our YouTube channel there, the birding, library resources, and everything. And then uh, soon we'll, uh, Thursday, we'll come out with a new schedule for next month. Okay. Hello, Mac. Welcome, welcome. Very glad you're here. A little bit of a side note. Openings are limited. Our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you're up to date with all our information and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Easiest way to find our YouTube channel, you're on the YouTube channel right now, but the easiest way to find it is GCHRL videos. And let's go ahead and let's go back here. And I'm actually going to come back. Yay, I'm back. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Welcome, welcome. All 
So let me go ahead and start by posting our handout. And do you have any questions before we get started? Just realize there's a little bit of delay in the chat between uh, basically posting a question and me reading it. So there's our handout right there and I'm gonna go ahead and Okay, so we're all on the same page here. So one of the things I'm gonna do is, of course, this is our handout with our classes. We usually have it so come into the class, everybody has their own computer, and then we have a handout, which is what this is. And like I said, I just posted it in the chat if you wanna view it and download it too. So a good idea is if we do a hands-on part, of course, I'm gonna kinda of cover everything, okay, uh, is maybe to have uh, me talking in this part here, a little device or something, and then kind of have it pop up here in the main computer so you can kind of flip back and forth, okay? Now I'm going to zoom in here and make it as large as I can because I know some folks might be viewing this on a smaller device. So welcome to our internet security class. Uh, this is a big one, so we were getting specific questions more than just the uh, basic computer classes, okay? or more than just the, the basic uh, introduction to internet where we talk about security and stuff like that and scams. We'll talk about that a little bit here today too, but we're gonna go more into some of our other parts. So let me go ahead and disappear here. I am still here, I've not been forgotten. So what will we cover today? We'll talk about uh, keeping, our, keeping ourselves safe online, connection, blah, if I can blah, blah, blah. We're gonna talk about <laughs> having a safe online connection. We'll talk about know your online rights. We'll talk about scams, and I'll talk about a phishing scam I just got here in a second ago. And then we'll talk about email and texting safety. We'll talk about what exactly is a VPN and do you need one, okay? so. I have a nice little graphic that'll explain that. It's something we kind of jump over uh, in the basic uh, internet class. So this is gonna get more in detail about what this is. I won't get too uh, tech jargony, but I have a nice little illustration to explain it a little bit better, okay? We'll also talk about a big issue, which is cyberbullying, okay? And then we'll talk about viruses, adware, and spyware. And we'll talk about how to stop malware. We'll talk about password help and tips, and I have some extra tips on there. So if you are the per uh, type of person that does have either like a folder somewhere to try to keep up with your pa uh, passwords or even like a small little notebook, um, I'll tell you some tips to kind of how to keep your password secret, even if someone did get a hold of your password. Let's say folder, password notebook, password you know, so a file on your computer. <laughs> what are some ways that you can keep yourself uh, safe that way too? Yay, Dr. M, very glad that you're here. Yay. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about, uh, well, so what questions uh, do you have before we get started? Any questions? Uh, have you had a VPN before? Have you used one? Have you know anybody that's been cyber bullied before? And that can even come from friends or family members, especially as we talk about um, you know, the political season, that can happen too. And have you been scammed before? Know a family member. One way to not get scammed is we share the information about scams and when we hear about something that sounds odd, uh, you know, look it up, is it a scam? Maybe share it with friends or family and less likely for them to get scammed as well. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's talk about keeping a safe online connection, okay? So like I said, we're going a little bit beyond what our internet class is or beginning the internet class. So we're gonna talk about what a Wi-Fi sniffer is and everything. So we kind of already assume that you know how to connect to Wi-Fi at different places, of course. So a big one is we wanna make sure that we're, when we're connected, we see a nice padlock on there. And I can actually show that. So you wanna make sure you see the padlock on there and you see HTTPS, okay? Look for the padlock in the browser showing that you are now encrypted with the site before making a purchase online or when checking email, okay? Before you make a purchase, make sure you're logged into the site. Is your computer ready? Look for the address bar padlock. Now, one of the things that'll happen as well is a lot of these uh, websites will actually push us to have the padlock and HTTPS before we're even logged in. So let's go ahead and look at, this is just going to an amazon.com site It'll automatically show the padlock. If we click that, it'll give us more information about uh, that about the secure login. We don't have to know that or remember that too much. Just know it shows the padlock. We see the HTTPS. And as you see, not actually logged into this website, but before I put in my information, if it takes me to the site, the page that says username and password, you do want to make sure it says HTTPS, okay? That means we're connected between us and the website uh, fully, okay? I won't go into encryption and all that stuff. Don't really need to know that, just know that it's a secure connection between you and the website. And you probably have used this for many years and didn't even realize, uh, realize it, okay? Big ones to make sure you see that before entering username password information, if you're just checking your email, if you're logging into Facebook or someplace, and also putting in credit card information. Now there's a HTTPS. Like I said, all our websites don't have HTTPS, but more and more websites are automatically pushing that, so do realize it makes us more secure. Now let's look at this picture here, okay? And I'm gonna zoom in one click. So it'll be nice and large. So basically these are some folks hanging out, let's say at a coffee shop somewhere, maybe they're at a restaurant, most uh, Starbucks, most McDonald's have Wi-Fi, okay? Maybe they're even at a public Wi-Fi. So even like at a library or someplace like that. So basically they're, they're, all their devices are using the Wi-Fi there at the, the place, we'll say. And because they're all connected to the same internet network, okay, Wi-Fi network, access point, throw out all those words to make sure everybody's covered there. Um, if someone is connected to them as well, do realize if they have an unsecure connection, meaning not an HTTPS connection, it is possible. So we have our people here on cell phones. We have people on a, a, like a tablet, a cell phone, cell phone little device, you know, maybe even a gaming device, it's possible. And then we have this one person over here and what are they doing? So their Wi-Fi signal is going back and forth through the air, okay? Now, because they're all connected to the same Wi-Fi uh, connection, is it possible for someone to use special software and grab information out of the air? Yes, it is, okay? It's called a Wi-Fi sniffer, okay? I won't go into names of software or anything like that, um, but yes, it is possible to do that if it's an unsecure connection, meaning not HTTPS, okay? So if you generally went to a site like Walmart or someplace like that, and you were just kind of seeing what was available, not logging in, saw HTTP, if you were just reading an article on a website, it says HTTP, not the S on there. And if someone did grab some of that information, it probably would not be a big deal. But what we're really interested in is when someone is typing in their username and password, okay? Buying something online, typing in a credit card number or something. So could this person grab that information if you are using HTTPS or if you were buying something through one of the apps 
um, let's say the Amazon app, the eBay app, you know, ma making a purchase that way. Actually, no, because that's a encrypted secure between you and the and the um, the company that's selling something. So, very, 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 very small um, ability to do that. So, if you're staying somewhere, uh, one of the things is so still have a little bit of stuff that could float around. It's possible for sites that aren't secure. Now, one of the things you can do, and in the add-on class, uh, internet class, I talked about different add-ons you can have. Uh, one of them that you can add to your computer as well is while you're surfing, you could do one that basically tries to push to HTTPS as much as it can. Okay, or you have like one of the Norton, uh, uh, the Norton add-on bars at the top or something like that, and even uh, um, uh, the Go, the Duck Duck Go now is actually doing a add-on. I'll show that real quick because that's pretty interesting. All right, give me a second to find that, and I'll show that. It's a newer thing that just happened, DuckDuckGo. If you're not familiar with DuckDuckGo, it actually is a, it's a search engine similar to Google. It will use Google as well. Its big thing is it tries to, tries to make it um, more anonymous when you're surfing the internet, more anonymous than even searching Bing or searching Google. So if you do do DuckDuckGo, it's supposed to be less trackers on there. And they have actually added, let me see if I can get the, uh, there we go, okay. They've recently come out and it's free with kind of like an ad blocker. Um, I don't know how much of an ad blocker it is because I personally use a different ad blocker, but we talk about that more in the, the browser class. So anyway, I won't go into that too much, but this is new and this is kind of privacy. So. Uh, if you don't have something like that, I would probably recommend using something like this, DuckDuckGo. I would trust them. I'm not sure if it has all the settings of uh, the main blocker that if someone is using one of those, they may prefer that because maybe it's more customizable. But this is a new one that's popped up. They do that, of course, then, they, then anytime you try to search the internet or anything, it always kind of pushes it to, uh, I was hoping it was going to show a picture of it because it doesn't show a picture of it. But anyway, it has like a little add-on that'll be up here on the top right. Uh, most of the browsers, you can turn it off if certain websites you think it conflicts in some way. And it's trying to push you to be your website to be less tracks and also have uh, more security going on as well. So that's kind of what its, uh, its big deal is, okay? And that's a free one that's come out from uh, DuckDuckGo.com. Uh, so there you go right there. Okay, so other ways we're making a purchase online, we're being secure, we're using the, the maybe the apps that come out from the different um, services. You know, if you're buying something on Etsy, you can use an Etsy app. You know, it should be more secure than just, you know, normally just using the, like a web browser or something, because if something was bad on your computer, which we'll talk about malware in a second, uh, that could be somebody tracking your information that way so do realize that we'll talk about that in a second so making sure you set, have HTTPS using the apps um, when you're putting in really in really important information now is this a problem at like your home Wi-Fi no because your home Wi-Fi you should basically be the only one connected to it and this is only really worrying about this with public Wi-Fi options okay now just like I talk about in the other class the big thing is that we need to talk about uh, making a purchase online it's really best when you make a purchase online not to use a debit card okay to use a real credit card we make it purchases so that you can question uh, the charge later and again our due diligence is to protect ourselves is to look at our bank account statements and to look at our credit card statements and see if there's something strange on there okay or myself, I actually have the um, the credit card app, my credit card app, on there. And every time I make a charge, it actually sends me like a, a alert that uh, something is been charged to the card. And the uh, so anytime I'm like in a restaurant or store or something like that, I make a purchase. I can see on the phone it pops up and tells me how much it was actually charged. Okay. Now I do have a, a quick story. Uh, this was more than a year ago. 
basically it was early in the morning and all of a sudden my phone was going da 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 and within about five minute period um, it had said that three charges had been charged to my credit card different places in a big city and it was like I'm not there um, so I contacted my credit card company immediately and they even thanked me for calling them and letting them know about the charges and uh, they said have you been here recently and I was like yeah I went there about a month ago uh, but do realize that you can keep your credit card as safe as you want to but um, there's ways that they can actually guess what your credit card is as well so they'll try try that but it's because it was a real credit card I didn't have any out-of-pocket charge I didn't it was less it was easier to dispute than using a debit card that takes money out of your account immediately and uh, basically they said okay well we're gonna uh, cancel cancel this number right now we're gonna don't worry about these charges okay and didn't charge me anything of course and then they sent me a new card and everything was good okay also there's now and you'll see there's more and more commercials about it lately that some of the banks and also some of the credit card companies will offer a limited use credit card number um, there's a app I think with uh, Capital One there's like a separate app that you can download and it allow you to use a credit card it'll make a credit card number for you and you can use that for like 24 hours or something like that and then after that then uh, you know that credit card number is not invalid anymore now another way to make purchases online is if you don't want to use a debit card or a real credit card you could use gift cards okay so going to most Walmarts most you know Walgreens uh, Targets Kroger's CVS's you know usual places like that usually they have a big stand now for gift cards do realize that it's not just for that store it's also for other stores as well and one of the, a lot of those stores are online stores so let's say you want to make a purchase from Amazon you could technically walk into one of these stores put $20 you know bill down they put $20 on the card and then basically you can make a purchase on Amazon that way it's not connected to you in any way once the money's not um, once the money's gone off that card then it's gone okay because it's a gift card no charge at all now they do have Visa MasterCard Amazon uh, gift cards but those do charge to put money on the card do realize that and I've heard that um, the Walmart kind of has a lesser price I think they call it the dot card or whatever but it's like three five six dollars to put money on the card but remember when the cards uh, money's off there's no money on the card they can't get any other money to it okay again check your statements often so this right here just realize you do have the very very vast flexibility and those gift cards like let's say you get a Walmart gift card not only can you make a purchase in the store but you can use that gift card to make a purchase online as well so there you go right there so as we continue here kind of talking about whoop, as we continue here to kind of keep talking about our uh, protecting ourselves online uh, here's a great article about 10 ways to, to stop being avoid uh, avoid when getting burned using a credit card article tips on safety but let's go ahead and let's talk about knowing our rights okay so know your online rights so and I'll quote this this is from uh, the FTC.gov website uh, in the United States online purchases you make with a credit card real credit card are protected by the Fair Credit Billing Act which limits your responsibility for fraudulent or erroneous charges to fifty dollars now I've had not a ton of fraudulent charges uh, but I've had a few and my credit card never charged me anything you just got to let them know that something strange is going on okay so that's basically is the right so do not feel do not be scared anyway contacting the credit card you know call the number on the back of your card call the number on the back of your debit card and there'll be somebody there to you know help you from your your, your bank or anything like that and you'll hear me say that a few times especially if you hear um, an email a call something strange you don't have to call them them back with whatever number they supplied or whatever call the card on the back of your your um, credit card and then there'll be someone uh, there to help you okay talking about uh, different disputes online this is where the, this comes from 
we talk a lot about the ftc.gov. Let's go to ftc.gov. And in a second, we'll talk about scams. So there's ftc.gov, their website. There's lots of information. We'll talk about the consumer alerts, uh, get consumer alerts, and also they have a blog on here that talks about different scams as well. Okay, tips, advice, information, you know, your protection in general, and of course to be able to file a complaint against a business as well. Okay, so we've got lots of links there for you to have keeping yourself safe online and everything. So let's talk about scams, okay? So what exactly is a scam, okay? A scam is a fraudulent or deceptive act or operation is the definition by Webster's, usually for the monetary gain. So what do we know from there already? Well, there's gonna be money involved. Some of these scams you may have to, you may have never heard of it before, um, it may be a newer scam going around, but the biggest thing is find, try to figure out um, where where the person is going to get paid, how are they going to get money, you know, situation like that. So, a big one, of course, is if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Like Grandma said, beware, beware. Okay, buyer, beware, beware. A big one that's going on now is uh, Facebook. A lot of scam advertisements on there where the product isn't exactly like it says it is. There's even some that looks like it's um, like a fantastic price on let's say a mixer for the kitchen. And then when some, and it says Amazon on it and when that someone taps, it's not an Amazon website and they're selling it for way like one, one fifth of what the price of that item should be and it must be some kind of phishing scam because that doesn't make sense and it's not on Amazon website either. So just be aware of that. Lots of advertisement scams uh, going around on, on Facebook in general. So what exactly is quid bids? Okay. Have you used quid bids before? Do you know someone that's used quid bids? Have you seen uh, one of their commercials? You've probably seen one of their commercials. Uh, this is the auction site, and I'll use that with quote marks. <laughs> this is the site where basically they have, um, you pay to bid. This is not like eBay in any way. I won't fully say it's a scam site. I'm sure there's some people that get some good things out of this. The big thing is the commercial. They talk about how uh, someone says, hey, I got this new bike or whatever. I'm trying to look for something that actually, they're just doing a bunch of gift cards. I got this new bike for, you know, the $10 or I got this iPad for $30. Brand new iPad and you're like, that's hard to believe. Like, well, basically the idea here is let's say we have 100 people in the room and people are penny bidding on an item and every time they penny bid, they have to pay money for that bid. Uh, some of these sites, it can be 25 cents. Some of these sites can be 50 cents or higher. Um, and basically, whoever wins the item, and the clock doesn't stop, as long as people are bidding it, it continues, as you can see here. Uh, whoever wins the item probably gets a really great deal on something, but then everybody else is out money. Okay, so not a big fan of this, um, I'm, but maybe a few people got a really good deal, but probably not. Okay, just remember everybody that wins. Here's somebody who won this. What does it say? It's a $30. Well, it's only a $10 uh, gift card to Walmart, and it said for something like $0.22. Cents. But remember, a whole bunch of other people bid it on that. So one person got a good deal, but then everybody else was out money. Okay, so uh, the other thing is if, if you look at the some of these, I think it's this one, that it actually will talk about that if you did not win the auction, they're happy to sell you the full retail price, including the, the what you tried to pay or what you spent on bidding towards the, the item. So 
full retail play, price uh, iPad because you didn't win the iPad for ten dollars. So there you go, right there. So be aware of those too good to be true sites. Pay to bid. Some items that you know the price is way too low says it's on from Amazon. It's really not. Be aware of that. High shipping rates. So basically, you're going to buy something. Maybe it's on eBay or someplace, and their shipping rate is maybe three times higher than what it really should be, but then the item is really cheap. I personally have uh, done one of those and it was an electrical cord for a laptop and it came in the mail and it did not work and I even tested the, the wire with an ohm meter and it did not physically hold a, a charge, okay? So the cord did not work. Contacted the person. Person says, you'll have to pay to ship it back okay because their little store did not cover the shipping but uh, they would refund my money which was not much so basically it was not really worth shipping back for him to refund that little bit of money um, because I had paid a high shipping rate so do be aware of that that's a possibility maybe they don't know their product is has problems but they've actually set it up that way so if they problem their product does have problems they're not giving out a lot of money okay Look out for fake IRS or missing jury duty scams, okay? Uh, so someone calls you, contacts you in some way, and the IRS basically says, hey, we have, uh, we, you owe money, someone's gonna come arrest you, need you to pay $400 over a credit card right now. That's a scam, the IRS does not do that. Uh, you miss jury duty. Um, and then they're basically fishing for information. They call you, they fish for information, they try to get information. Well, what's your social security number? I start asking a bunch of questions like that. So just be aware. I do know the legitimate businesses, doctors will call you from, feel, almost feels like random numbers. Um, but maybe it's best to have their office number, the business official number, um, you know, to call them back uh, that way. Uh, another one is at getting free, you know, over the internet uh, computer repair. A lot of the times they'll ask you to go to a certain website to give them access to your computer. Uh, Microsoft <laughs> will not contact you. Uh, whatever your main com company is, like Dell or HP or something, they won't contact you randomly saying, hey, we well, think there's something wrong with your computer. The way that works is if you have a warranty with them, then you would call the number that came with your computer in the box. They would have to, um, you know, I won't say wait a long time online, but you'd probably have to wait a while to actually talk to a person and then they'd be able to help you that way, okay? So be aware of giving uh, basically random people that call you access to your computer. They could be trying to get stuff off your computer. To avoid scams, like I said, the Federal Trade Commission has a great blog there we go scam blog uh, there's the address right there they're constantly po posting something new on there you've won now pay us is always a scam that's a great one one that talks about hey you just won an auction you just won a, a lottery in another country uh, you just you won something you you, you know you were actually won the uh, the um, I can't even remember what it was. The one with Egg McMahon. Egg McMahon's trying to give you money. Okay? So that's a scam but because they want you to pay some kind of taxes or something like that. And this is from the FTC.gov website. So this is a, a U.S. government run website. Um, has all kinds of stuff in here. There it is. Publishers Clearinghouse. A well-known organization. You won't believe the van's pop coming tomorrow. Yeah, but it said, but can you send us some money? A big one is a scam will say, can you give us, can you go to the store and buy us a bunch of gift cards and scratch off and then send us the numbers. So if anybody says for you to pay them in gift cards, that's 100% a scam. Okay. Now, this is one of those where, and I know we're maybe a little bit more isolated than we usually are, but if you do happen to hear family member, friend uh, is doing anything like this or talks to you about they're sending someone money. 
Um, definitely talk to them, try to work it out. They may be being scammed and may not even realize it, okay? A lot of times if it's something they think they're gonna win something, they usually start talking to somebody else about it. Do your research about it, help your friend or family member, and you may need to alert somebody else about it if it's really bad, like the police or something, okay? Uh, do you realize I, I know the banks are really big organizations, but if you do have a question, uh, you know, you can uh, stop by, even through the teller, <laughs> even through the drive-up teller now. You can call in, call the number on the back of your credit card, have questions about banking stuff, talk to the person, the drive through teller, saying there this might be a scam, I'm not sure, they'd be happy to help you, or they'll send you in the right direction or someone to talk to, okay? Because uh, banks don't like their customers being scammed because it's more of a headache for them and they try to fix all that stuff, okay? Video show scammers uh, tell you to pay, hang up on a business, let's see. Keep calm, avoid scam, coronavirus scams, fake money, fun, all kinds of stuff. So this is a great website to go to to kind of get up to date information. Now, whoop. if you are having some problems with the business, the FTC saw you can do a complaint about a business or also you can report someone check out the reputable uh, nature on an online store like the Better Business Bureau or someplace. If you are making a purchase from a place online and uh, maybe it's like a small business, maybe they make small things, um, you may want to make sure that when you pay them it's through PayPal or like a system like Google Checkout. Uh, that way that you're not actually giving anybody your credit card, especially over the phone or anything, uh, but you're using a reputable you know, pay uh, credit card service like PayPal or Google Checkout. Okay. Usually, the, I, I will tell you this, for a small business pay, using PayPal, setting up a Google checkout on their website's very easy to do and you know it's it's almost them having to go out of their way to try to find an, a different um, credit card processing service so um, expecting that is not that big a deal okay uh, another one is if you're not sure about them if they're willing to do business they should have a phone number that you can call I've even had it where I was making a purchase from an uh, online retailer, very, very legitimate, do them for a long time, um, but I had some questions about the product, uh, called into they, their 1-800 number, and basically the representatives was very helpful. I needed to see if the two things would actually work together, um, because one of them had to have a, a screw clamp to clamp it to something. So I called in, I said, I'm buying these two things. Um, you know, will they work together? And the person's like, yes, they will. No problem. Then I said, okay, well, I'm ready to make a, you know, this purchase. And he said, well, I'm just a helpline. We don't take uh, credit cards over the phone. Uh, you go back to the website and then make a purchase with the secure uh, payout. He said, we're just a helpline. It's all I do. And I was like, okay, that's great. And it made me feel more uh, secure uh, about making a purchase from them too, that they wanted to make sure they, they kept my, um, you know, my credit card secret between me and the credit card processing company. Okay. Try to give out as little information as possible. Okay. Reputable online retailer will never ask you for like your social security number. There's no reason for that. Are you trying to get a loan? <laughs> Just trying to buy this uh, ice cream maker, you know. Then you don't need to have to worry about getting the social security number. Not sure contact a seller, like I just said. As much as it is, try to avoid it. You might find yourself the victim of a scam. If this happens, try to report the scam. Federal Trade Commission, like I said. Uh, Internet Crime Complaint Center is IC3.gov uh, is where you can talk about that. Scams as well. Now let's go ahead and let's talk about one I got just a few hours ago. And I'll read it to you. This was actually in a, a text email. I don't actually have to open the email. Um, excuse me, it's a, a text message. I don't actually have to open the text message to read it because I get an alert on the front here. 
Uh, I'll just read it to you. And the strange part about it is the text, uh, uh, the text in the text actually is uh, italicized. So I guess that's to make it look a little different than just like your friend texting me. It's a random number, 772 area code, not our area code. And it says, your Amazon account has been locked. Please update your billing information. And then it says HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And the address is L-I-K-D dot I-N. Which if you went to the internet class, you understand I-N means India. Okay. So it's out of the country. Um, uh, email, excuse me, address. And it has a forward slash and a whole bunch of letters and numbers and stuff. And then it even says AMZ equals Q2P. So what would that probably do if I tapped on it? Well, if I tapped on it, it would probably take me to a fake Amazon uh, site, okay? So it may be very generic, I don't know. I've had some of those. Uh, sometimes that'll happen when, let's say, a Facebook, you get a private message from a friend that says something like, uh, one that was really big going around said, I didn't think this of you and then it's just a link. Tap the link and it would take you to what looked like a, to view this video you have to be logged in Facebook, which someone might just put their username and password in there and not even think about it to try to watch this video. Because that, But I was actually in Facebook on my phone, so immediately I went, what, what? And I did actually tap on that. So it does happen. But if it's a scam that you've never heard of, you can be gotten as well, and it doesn't matter what age or anything like that. So if I tap this, it's probably going to take me to a fake Amazon site, and I got this message an hour ago. Okay, So it does happen. What's the best thing to do? Just go in there. With my cell phone, I can actually block that text number. They probably will not contact me again from that number, um, but just do realize it does happen, and we need to be vigilant and careful. Okay, Now, if you did get something like that that said something about, let's say, an Amazon account, maybe a Walmart account, some kind of account that you have online, then don't tap on anything in the email. Don't tap on anything in a text message. Just pull up the website, pull up the, um, app, uh, the app on your phone directly, and then go in there. Usually, if there's some kind of notification, you would get it there. And, of course, I've already been to Amazon um, within the last hour and I didn't get any notifications so trust me my account has not been locked for any reason so be aware that's different scams they'll use to get you to tap or click on their um, you know their so they can grab your information why do they want that well one of the things is they could buy something ship it to a different this is follow the money again so what do they want to do they want to buy something new they could ship it to themselves and then they could sell it like on an auction site like Etsy or they could sell it on eBay or something like that as a new product someone's buying the product they don't know it's been stolen they just know that they're getting a, um, a good deal on it okay technically that is a stolen item because they use my account to buy something uh, but yeah there you go I'm sure there's another name for that but you know it's still a stolen item all right, so we basically uh, just kind of mentioned the text message there. So what is that that just happened to me? Well, a phishing scam was sent my way. Now, if you work at a business or a job, the, they may bring in someone, a tech person. They may bring someone just to kind of talk to everybody to basically say, don't click on any emails. You may even have it where you can't email your other employees like files or you can't send them to websites or anything like that unless it's been officially um, added to the list or whatever okay so uh, one big thing there is oh I can pull that up well that's just a definition so phishing scam scam by which an internet user is duped uh, as by a deceptive email message or phone call into revealing personal or confidential information which the scammer can use illegally for financial gain okay so remember we're gonna follow the money there's money involved in there somewhere now 
let's say that you have a small business and you can actually accept credit cards. So can a business be scammed as well? So if someone contacts you and says, hey, I'm really interested in your cake service, your DJ service, your wedding planning service, whatever it is, really interested in it, and I want to um, go, I'm gonna give you, uh, go ahead and give you your deposit. Uh, do, you, do you take credit cards? And the idea of this is, and he goes, okay, well, uh, how much do you charge? And okay, well, I have an event coming up and I need, you know, the cake or whatever. And person says, okay, uh, well, I charge, you know, $100 for a cake, just saying, $100 for a cake. And the person says, okay, that's great. Uh, I'm going to give you a credit card and I want you to overcharge the credit card by $500, so $600. And you can keep the hundred dollars, but I really need you to help me do do me a favor and send the other five hundred dollars to uh, uh, the flower persons that's supposed to be at this event. Yeah, I'll give you their PO box number, and if you could send them a check with the five hundred dollars, that would really help me out. And you're like, what? Well, how am I getting scammed? Because I'm going to get paid for my services, but then I'm sending. Well, the deal is it's a stolen credit card number. Okay, so you could actually be put being involved in a stolen credit card number ring. So that's a big one. Uh, so businesses can be scammed as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And again, any information that you learn from this class, feel free to kind of share it with friends or family members because they may have had um, this happen to them and they don't fully understand it. But usually once you hear about something like this, kind of do a little bit of a Google search for it, and usually it pops up pretty quickly of why. But follow the money, okay? So you get an email, let's say, from your bank, and it basically says, hey, uh, there's been an issue with your account, and it looks like it's your bank. Well, did, let's say this person that tried this, this phishing scam with me an hour ago, did they know that I have an Amazon account? Probably not. They were just trying to guess. So for some way, way or another, they got my cell phone number somewhere. Um, maybe I filled out some kind of free uh, something and it's out there and they, they, they got a hold of it and they sent me that and they may send me something later. Who knows, it think, makes it look like it's from a bank or something. I used to, used to get a lot of emails from like Bank of America and that's not my bank, okay? So your bank will not email you asking for information um, you will not win anything by sending emails to 20 of your closest friends or whatever, okay? And beware of the check scam. It's a big one that hands out. So basically, uh, you get a check in the mail. Uh, they ask you to cash the check. Usually you have to cash the check at your bank to be able to get the money. And then they ask you to send the money back. Well, what is the deal? It's a scam. The check that they sent you will eventually bounce once it goes back through uh, international waters and all that kind of stuff, okay? And then you'll be uh, have to pay that money for the, 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 the check, the money that you got uh, from that check, okay? Never respond to a uh, unsolicited email, okay? One response or like a hit or if you ask the person a question or something, it could justify them adding you to a, they know that your email is active, so they'll try some other scams. A big one as well is that the thing where they call you and they pretend that they're more than one person, okay? And maybe they have more than one email address uh, from different numbers and everything, and then it sounds like you're talking to a different person, and maybe it is a different person, um, but it's all round robin. They're all in on it, okay? Uh, there was a uh, famous one, and I'm trying to remember the specifics of it, but basically this was like uh, someone trying to scam someone in London, and they basically pretended they were like the London bank, and then it went through and three people were involved doing uh, different, different um, uh, phone numbers and answering and all that to try to get a deposit, the person to deposit something in the bank. And it was just just scammers. It wasn't really anybody any real. Okay, never pay anybody with gift cards. So if you hear that Aunt Lucille is paying somebody in gift cards, I gotta go to Walmart to get some gift cards to pay somebody. 
you got to do what? So ask questions, uh, find out friends or family members. Remember, anybody can be scammed. One of the things is we've got college kids going back to school and stuff. And do realize a lot of those things trying to sign up for, uh, let's say, apartments, different places to stay, even credit free credit card uh, information. Uh, do realize they may be more willing to, to share what their social security number is, stuff like that, and they could be scammed in some way too, okay? So realize a scam, a person can be scammed of any age, okay? Uh, the big one is uh, don't click unsubscribe on something if you don't remember signing up for it, okay? Better to label it as a spam email address. Now, if it's legitimate, Maybe you did sign up for something. Maybe you did make a purchase at a website and now they're sending you great deals and you don't want that anymore. Feel free to hit unsubscribe. You're like, oh yeah, I bought something on that website and now they're sending me all this, you know, advertisements. Uh, there actually was um, a new grocery store that came to town and I went in there and I signed up for their, their card. Um, you know, just the free, you know, card that comes with the grocery store. And it was about a week later, I started receiving uh, e uh, emails from them. And it, it come to find out, it was at least once a day. So after a few weeks, I had realized, oh man, I don't know why, but they're sending me an email about deals every single day. And I'd only been there once. And it was a far drive and it wasn't my normal grocery store. Well, I actually went in and clicked unsubscribe and it took me to the website and just by default, I was set up to receive monthly newsletters, weekly newsletters, and their daily newsletter <laughs> about deals they had. So they were trying really hard. So at the time I was willing to try to give them a, uh, uh, you know, I was going to go back there eventually. So I actually unsubscribed from the daily, <laughs> the daily, um, deals uh so basically i was just getting one about once uh every two weeks or something like that they had that i was like okay that's fine so sometimes the unsubscribe if it's legitimate you can go in there and change your settings maybe you may want to still get a newsletter from them but maybe not too much or whatever at least control what you see okay never click on the url to kind of go to it okay one of the things is uh you remember with our uh, web browsers we can actually take our mouse hover over the link and it'll show us where it's going to take us uh, with the smartphone or whatever you may have to do like a press and a hold I won't go into that because I know it can be different on the different devices but it's a lot easier on the computer to look at hovering your mouse over a link it'll pop up and tell you where it's going to take you so what I mean by that is you may get an email and that and it looks like that's the web address it's going to take you to looks like your real bank or something or real credit card company and it's really not it's actually just been it's kind of like cloaked so when you actually click on the link it's going to take you to a different page hovering over it may show you that it may not it depends big one is of course that only communicate with the people you know all right uh, never sign up for any kind of site that says something about removing your name from a spam list now the uh, The FTC.gov website does have, well, where was I? There we are. That actually does, the FTC.gov website does have a, a register to do not call, okay? I don't know how effective that would be because most of the things I'm talking about are basically illegal scams. They're not just people calling you trying to sell you, you know, better health care. Uh, that, that may, this may help with that trying to sell you better insurance or something because um, those are like legitimate businesses that they um, you know have gotten a number mostly I'm talking about scams and stuff like that but you may or may not want to do that the big thing is try to communicate only with people you know okay okay now let's dive into learning about what a VPN is okay like I said I'm gonna try not to make this too technical because I will get bored <laughs> uh, and that means that you definitely will get bored okay 
So we won't dive into it, make it too technical. Mostly I'm gonna talk about uh, my two little illustrations I have here, okay? So let's talk about us the normal way to begin with. So here we are, we're at a device with our cell phone, our tablet, whatever it is, and then we actually want to connect with the internet, okay? What happens is, is when we connect to the internet, we're actually given an IP address, okay? So all our devices have a certain number. An example is similar to this big long number here. This is one way our internet requests can be tracked back to our internet service provider and computer. That's also one way that we can communicate. So to get on the internet, we need a, that's right, we need a number, okay? An IP address number, internet protocol number. So here we are, we connect up to the internet, we get our number from our internet service provider, and then we go on the internet and we're kind of having fun going back and forth this way, okay? Now, one of the things is this, and I'm gonna discuss this the way a business traveler would need to do. So, if there is a way that let's say you're using like a hotel Wi-Fi and you were not secured with the with the website uh, remember your data could be sniffed we talked about ways it not being sniffed um, using make sure it's HTTPS okay is set up so what exactly does a VPN do okay a VPN masks our IP address it gives us a new one and it encrypts everything back and forth while we surf the internet, okay? So here we are with our device. Now, the thing is, if we do go to a website, our internet service provider does know what website we went to, and if we go to a website, they could capture our ISP number, and then if there was some kind of illegal activity, then they could question it, the internet service provider could feed it back to basically our home location or wherever we are, okay? Now, that's one part of a VPN, is hiding that or masking that. Our main focus on our discussion of VPN right now is basically keeping yourself secure while you're away from, let's say, your home internet, okay? So we have our business traveler up here. Our business traveler uses a VPN. They turn on their computer, their, their computer connects to the VPN, okay? And the VPN actually changes uh, the outgoing and ingoing information from their computer, okay? It encrypts it because it uses goes through the internet service provider, like Verizon, Comcast, or whatever, and it connects up to the VPN server, okay? Now, it plays a little bit of a, if you've ever been in class, in uh, middle school or elementary school and someone passed around a, a note. It's kind of like that, okay? So let's imagine that we're here at our desk. We want a note. Here's Susie here. And let's pretend that, you know, it's a teacher. So instead of getting up, passing it, we're gonna use Susie to pass the note back and forth, okay? So, we actually connect up the, v the VPN server. Our software is encrypts it completely. And then the VPN server requests what the websites are. When it comes back to the VPN server, then the VPN server encrypts the website information, all of it, sends it to our software, that gets decrypted and then we see it, okay? Now, according to the ISPN service provider, the only website we connected to was this one, the, the VPN server, because they cannot track the traffic that's going back and forth through our internet service provider. Most of our VPN servers do not keep that information, it doesn't track the information, and when we connect to the VPN, we're actually given a new uh, internet service provider number, which is from them, so it cannot be tracked back. Okay, now, Let's say that we're the business traveler and we're gonna go out of the country and we need to, or you know, hotel or someplace like that, and we need to connect up with our business or you know, keep secret secret for our, for our company, okay? So a lot of business travelers, 
if they're given a computer to use or they're given a cell phone to use it could be set up to always have a VS VPN software on so it connects up any of their data going back and forth through the internet to here is all encrypted so there can be no Wi-Fi sniffing going on or anything like that and that's what a lot of the times business traveler will have to do okay the other reason to have a VPN not only does it kind of keep yourself safe always all your websites you go to are encrypted but also if you're in a country that does have some kind of block uh, a firewall as you could say from certain websites or certain uh, countries that block Facebook uh, you know, if a business traveler is concerned about I may not be able to access my company's website that will not be an issue because as long as they can go through the firewall uh, through this connect to their VPN server let's say in LA Atlanta uh, you know automatically then the website let's say the server in um, you know Atlanta is going to the websites encrypts it back goes back to our person decrypts it uh, the, the great firewall for that country would not know what websites you were viewing okay so do you realize that that's the big plus and a lot of the times why a lot of business travelers will actually have to be using a, a VPN a service okay now uh, their their view the VPN is something extra that you would have to pay for there is a free one that I have on here that has a limit on how much data you can use um, but now it's becoming more and more mainstream Norton is even selling a service that does have a VPN and their service is really geared towards just the normal user uh, surfing the internet and stuff not not downloading um, you know with different you know software and stuff so it's just kind of focused on basically a business traveler or business person so is a VPN for everyone no most users uh, they use their home Wi-Fi you know they're using their smartphone they're connect they're you know, not connected to the Wi-Fi with their smartphone they're just connected it that way if you turn the Wi-Fi hotspot on your phone and you're of course the only one connected to your phone like with your laptop or whatever and you're on uh, you know traveling you're fine okay the biggest thing for this is just try to get in Wi-Fi sniffing going around uh, you know want to check your email connect to your import sites as long as you have the HTTPS you may never need a VPN okay what does it cost there's some that uh, will have a, a low fee uh, there's one here that I have listed that's free um, but it has a limit to it and here's a website for last year CNET's uh, uh, more description into it. So a great article that goes into it I trust CNET on a lot of their uh, information and talks about the best uh, services and they'll talk about and compare and contrast them okay so does everybody need a VPN uh, no they don't is it a business traveler traveling a lot need a VPN it's probably a good idea okay because that person may not always know what Wi-Fi they need their cell phone service may not be good there so they have to use Wi-Fi instead in their hotel or whatever and like I said a lot of businesses will automatically have all that software installed on their devices and it may even uh, I would say force you I would just say it turns on every time that you try to connect to the internet okay so if it's a business and they said here's your laptop for your job but you have to click this this button and turn this on every time or every time you connect it's going to have that um, that's that's pretty standard they're trying to keep their secrets safe trying to keep you safe as well versus their secrets as well okay so hopefully this was not getting too technical into it but just kind of realizing that as long as we're using HTTPS or we're buying something using the apps on our phone we make a purchase you know maybe not be making using uh, internet to do banking using the internet to do credit card stuff make a purchase you may not want to be on a public um, you know Wi-Fi when you do that you may just want to do it on your cell phone directly connected to the um, cell phone tower not Wi-Fi or use the app uh, you know from your bank or your credit card okay 
Any questions about that? I know this is a big subject. This is one that we would, would uh, get in class and a lot of times it was like, well, I can give you a website to go to. Uh, we, we don't really go into that. That's more like an advanced topic. So we have this class to talk about that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about uh, cyberbullying, okay? You may or may not have been cyberbullied. You may or may not uh, believe, I'll say that, believe that you've had a friend or family member that's been cyberbullying. So we have a young lady here, as we see her book bag and stuff, is in school. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, that's a good idea to have one of those. Mac, that is good. That is good, especially doing any kind of uh, travel, international travel. Because you never know what Wi-Fi you might be using or, or you know, that might not have a cell phone signal there. Okay, I will tell you it would give you more options. That's really a big one thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll talk about cyberbullying a little bit here. So we have a young lady here. She's at, she's at home. She has um, her book bag here at home, just trying to do some homework or something. I don't know if you can read it, but basically let's say she's getting some text messages, social media, messages from what she thought was friends or people at least she knows and they're saying ugly things so just because someone's in the at home <laughs> it's very sad just because you think you know <laughs> someone's at home and they're safe they could be in the corner you know reading a lot of ugly things people saying things about them okay and then we don't even know about it okay how do we define bullying okay the use of electronic communication to bully a person, typically by sending messages of intimidation or a threatening nature. May be reluctant to admit to being the victim of cyber, many may be reluctant to admit to being the victim of cyberbullying. Okay, and this is with any age group as well. Here's one, 59% of kids have experienced cyberbullying at least once by only but only 10% of kids ask their parents for help okay it's a great website there discussing family safety on Wondershare so if someone is being bullied through social media posts uh, most sites have ways to block or remove offensive material okay I do know that Facebook has an excellent one um, do you realize that some of the some of the social media like like Snapchat, a lot of the time the kids believe they can say or do anything that they want um, because they're using that because it may have a timer on the vid video or the picture and just realize anything that can be put on a screen uh, so can be captured, okay? And uh, the funny thing is you'll talk to some of them and they go, oh, well, I'll know if someone takes a screenshot of a picture of text or whatever. I send them and I go, well, you do realize that they could just pull out their friend's cell phone and then use that to take a picture of the screen and then you won't know. And that doesn't always work all the time anyway. So do you realize there's special software that, that can avoid all that? But so they may feel kind of free to say mean things and think that it's going to disappear uh, in five seconds and no one will ever see it again. Uh, I won't get into it too much. But supposedly some of those services that make things disappear after a while, supposedly they have they don't disappear. They actually hold on to them to a certain period of time just in case there is some kind of um, unlawful things going around. I'll say that. Uh, the funny thing about we have now is things are more likely someone's going to do something crazy. Someone's going to um, do something mean to someone. <laughs> it's more likely to be recorded now which I guess is a good thing but you would think that that would mean that they wouldn't do those things but it doesn't okay digital media apps allow to communicate and express their creative creativity uh, connection with peers and share their friend their feelings a lot of them in a good good safe environment talking to friends uh, exp expressing their feelings 
However, they can be an avenue for which cyberbullying occurs. There are many types of apps and sites allow for free. They give users the ability to search for people and share or post information about them anonymously. Okay, Social media has many benefits that must be balanced with the risks that present uh, risks to be aware of include uh, screening for harmful content on websites, apps, varies widely. Content posted can be incorrect, harmful, or hurtful. Why they are, why are you so dumb, stuff like that. Can be used to share harmful adult content. Privacy controls over who can view or access posted material vary across apps. Many users are not aware of how to use them effectively. Apps that allow for real-time user video live streaming can be used to show bullying, violence, suicide, harmful acts as they are happening in real time. Okay, some apps, some apps that include location information can be used to get personal information such as someone's age, current location, or where uh, someone lives. Uh, so do realize that some of these social media apps do share their current GPS location. And a lot of the uh, age groups may feel like, well, these are just my friends, but you realize it could become an issue. A friend one day could become a friend to me uh, another <laughs> day, I guess someone would say. Apps that su support telephone calls do not show up on call logs, so parents may not know who their children are talking to. Stopbullying.gov, cyberbullying, kids on social media, and gaming index. So I've got a great website resource uh, there to go to for to have more information. Okay, so this is kind of a sad topic, but it's one that uh, we have included with our keeping ourselves safe online class and security here. Do they have any questions about these? Uh, have any questions about this? I should say, cyberbullying or anything like that. You know, in some respects, even um, scams could start out as friendly and then become more of a pressure uh, situation where someone is pushing someone else to give them money. And that could be any age, uh, but pressuring someone to give them money, and that's basically uh, bullying them into doing something. You gave me a little money before, can I have some more? Uh, there's even one where they've talked about, they contact someone that someone might, might be a little lonely, talk to them a lot, <laughs> any age is what I'm talking about, talk to them a lot, Maybe even if it's uh, someone younger, they may be giving them money to do things, or someone could be uh, asking for money if someone does have the means to give money, and then basically making them feel comfortable like they're a real person talking to them, where it's kind of a scam um, asking them for money. Okay? Bit of a sad subject, but it's an interesting one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start talking about malware, viruses, adware, and spyware. Okay, we've got our zombie computer up there walking around. Ooh, zombie computer, not good. Okay, so malware, what exactly is malware? Technically, all these things, viruses, adware, uh, spyware, ransomware, all this kind of junk, it's all under the, the, the label of malicious software, okay, or malware. Malware is an abbreviated term, there you go, it's malicious software, which is specifically designed to gain access or damage a computer without the knowledge of the owner, including spyware, key loggers. Key loggers is a type of software to try to record what keystrokes you put into the computer, could keep track of what conversations you've had online, and or try to grab you putting in credit card information, usernames, and passwords. Okay. Uh, I lost my place. Where's my thing? Key loggers, viruses, worms. Of course, viruses are kind of to destroy our computer. Worms are kind of to grow, to push their virus to other computers, too. Uh, today, much of malware is created for profit through forced advertising, adware, stealing sensitive information, spyware, spreading email spam using a zombie computer. So your computer's sending out 
um, junk to other computers and you don't even realize it. All your friends are, re are receiving, you know, links. They click here and it looks like it's from you. It grabs information, sends it to somebody else like an email address. Extort money like ransomware. Someone gets to the computer and pops up screen. They can't do anything and it says, your computer has been locked. We found you've done something bad. And uh, if you don't send $1,000 to this bank account number, then um, you know we'll send it to the police or something like that. Or your computer is locked. And if you don't give us $300, we're going to delete everything on the computer. You know, something like that. So let's go ahead and, well, I believe that's just the definition. But let me look and see real quick if that would be informative for us. Yeah, so this is the... Norton website about malware. No, I don't want a special offer. So it kind of goes into preventing malware and has other articles on here as well. Ransomware, webcam security, of course. Classic is I'll see a lot of people come in when they have a like a note, little notepad on top of their um, camera or something. <laughs> little post-it note. All right, a computer virus. Now, a lot of think times, and it's been the past, a lot of folks will say, hey, I think I got a computer virus. My computer's running slow, when actually they'd have some adware on their computer or just some software that's running that maybe they don't use a lot and it's slowing their computer down, okay? Our computers have gotten a little bit better at doing some of these things, um, but we still could catch a virus. Virus is a type of malicious code or programming written to alter the way a computer operates and is designed to spread from one computer to another. A virus has the potential to cause unexpected or damaging effects, such as harming the system software by corrupting or destroying the data. So this is kind of one of the things that makes a virus separate from what malware is doing or even spyware. Spyware wants to hang out on your computer and kind of watch, watch what you're doing. Spyware can remain dormant on your computer without showing major signs or symptoms. However, once the virus infects your computer, the virus can infect other computers on the same network, stealing passwords or data. So it's completely different than basically a destructive virus. It basically wants to spread itself to basically steal information, do a keylogger, you know, corrupt some files, spamming or emailing contacts. The biggest thing about it is someone does hack our accounts, go in, change your password immediately, okay? And, and make sure that you don't have any other accounts that are using that password as well, and maybe you need to go in and change them. So let's say you, for some reason, we'll talk about passwords in a second, so I, I won't get into that uh, yet. Uh, even taking over your machine or it can be just as devastating and irritating things. What are the signs of computer virus? Okay, it can produce the various symptoms. Here are some of them frequent pop-up windows. Pop-ups might encourage you to visit unusual sites or they might uh, prod you to download antivirus or software that might have something generic that says, uh, spyware sweeper found something click here to download uh, to you know uh, to fix your computer and then when you do that you're actually putting more adware on your computer uh, we found a vi uh, we found a virus we found malware on your computer we'll fix it for thirty dollars you know click here to enter your username and password in your credit click here to enter um to enter your uh, credit card information it, it's terrible Things that'll change your homepage on your web web browser, change what you're what what you're searching instead of Google. All of a sudden, you're searching something else. Um, may be able to, unable to reset these settings, and when you reset them, you turn your computer off, turn it back on, and all of a sudden the settings are the same as they were before. 
uh, mass emails being sent from your email account you look at your email and click the sent box all of a sudden it's showing other emails that have been sent out that means someone has changed guess what your password is go in change your password okay immediately because something you haven't used before is the best idea uh, this is one reason why it's never a good idea to send uh, private information through an email um, like your credit card information or anything like that or passwords to other accounts uh, your computer frequently crashes. A virus can inflict major damage on your hard drive. This may cause your device to freeze or crash. It may also your device for coming back on. Okay, so it won't let it shut down for some reason. Usually a slow computer performance, a sudden change of processing speed could signal that your computer has a virus. Okay, unknown programs that start up when you turn on your computer may become aware of the unfamiliar program when you start your computer or might notice it by checking your computer's listing of active applications. So if you do the classic control alt delete and it's showing the stuff's running, um, you know, there used to be like uh, one that used to be really annoying. It was like my shopper or something like that. I don't forget. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something like that and it would install a um, ad bar in your browser it would change your the search in your browser and basically it would even every website you went to it would actually take the keywords and change them um, to if you hovered over them it would take you to one of their websites to try to sell you something and there actually it was actually very difficult to get rid of at the time it's a lot easier now but Things like that can be difficult. Sometimes when we do find out we have something like that, we run, we'll talk about in a second, like a malware program. It may identify the program and it may even give you more steps that you have to complete to get rid of it. Okay, It's very possible. But our malware software has gotten a lot better than it used to be. Okay, Unusual activities like password changes that could prevent you from logging into your computer. So how do we stop malware? Run antivirus and malware protection software. Uh, the big thing about the antivirus and the malware, it can identify what it is. So if it's unable to fix it or get rid of it, then you could do a little research, try to find out a way to get rid of it that way because then hopefully you'll have a name of whatever it was. Make sure Windows is up to date. I remember, I think this was uh, Windows 8. Uh, one that I think my computer got something in it, but basically it would not allow Windows to update the computer. I actually had to do, and I won't go into that too much, but I basically had to uh, download it on another computer and then uh, put it on a flash drive and install it, install the updates by hand um, to, the, to the Windows machine. And then I do remember it actually, it was out of control anymore. And then the uh, virus, the malware software found it and got rid of it and identified it too. So if Windows, um, you click the Windows update and it can't do it for some reason, okay. Uh, so check for updates for your computer, install them automatically. Download the latest browser. Usually when we turn our browser on, Firefox, edge or whatever it'll check to see if it is the latest version definitely let it update make sure that you have an antivirus program if you don't have one just use the free antivirus program that comes with Windows one issue that can happen is let's say someone buys a new computer they get McAfee Norton for free for a year and then they don't want to subscribe to the annual fee then McAfee and Norton is not updating the definitions anymore. They're still scanning for what they um, originally had. They're doing a good job, but the problem is the new definitions come out. It's not scanning for those. And then eventually, a year, two, three years later, it doesn't have the newest information. It's not the latest version. So it's almost better to uninstall Norton McAfee if you got one once they expire. Let the Microsoft Windows Defender take over because it's free and it will get the latest updates. Okay, It's actually already installed with the Windows 8 and Windows 10 machines. Um, other free software, AVG free, 
And again, don't pop up, don't click on any unwanted pop-ups that pop up. Now, one of the ones, um, here's the, about how to get to the Microsoft Security Essentials uh, website here. Like I said, you should already have it installed in a Windows 8 and 10 computer. AV, now, they'll only run at one time, so once you uninstall one of the other antivirus programs, then that means the Microsoft one will kick in, okay? Anti-malware, why do I need both? Well, it's a good idea. I just use the free one that's listed on the, the malware. The malware bytes is one that I really recommend uh, to use. I just use the free version of it. That means I have to run it by hand. Okay, so here's the free one to use here. They mostly focus on businesses. So as you see that they're trusted by a lot of different websites and stuff. And they also have professional uh, malware uh, for professional people that do IT work. So that's not something you'd be interested in, but just let you know that they are a, um, I guess you say like a big time, you know, uh, a big time they're in the fight here uh, to get rid of this stuff okay Do you have a video So one of the things is if you do the free, you don't get the real time watching, but let's say, but remember it is the free version of it. <laughs> so there you go right there. Uh, so going back to what we were, let me just go down here and talk about this. So you basically would run it every once in a while, maybe once a month, or if you saw that there was something strange going on. Norton also has like a built-in add-on that can help protect as well. And I have to say, some of the browsers like Firefox and the rest of them are adding more and more uh, security features to be able to fight this stuff and even kind of stop you from going to certain websites that might be listed as having a virus or even having uh, some kind of malicious malware on there. Okay, So if you do, are surfing the internet and it pops up and says, hey, it's not a good idea to go to this website, or if you do have like a um, add-on blocker, like the ad block, or the origin uh, version of that which I like uh, you can actually stop you from going to websites that potentially could have um, harmful stuff for your computer on there a uh, big one here and I just have this listed as well if you do find some software in your computer that you do not want on there a good idea is to uninstall them okay so basically if you do start hit the control panel go to programs and features It'll show all the programs installed in a Windows 10 computer. You can left click them and then uninstall the ones you don't want. Now, make sure it's not a system program when that came with the computer. A lot of the times you can look at the date when it was installed. If it was something you installed then, and you don't want it more, definitely feel free to uninstall it. Okay. Make sure you're not uninstalling some system file or something that you do need for the computer sound card to work in some way. All right, so let's talk about our last page here. Let's talk about our password help. We'll do a little bit of an overview here, and then we'll talk we'll overview of what we've learned today, and then we'll start talking about some of the classes that will be available at, um, this coming week, and there you go. So do not use the same password for all accounts. Okay, This goes way more into our password ideas and uh, you know there are password generators out there as well to help so do not use the same password for all your accounts uh, let's say someone did hack your email which it's possible uh, go in there change your password and try to think about what else you've used that password for then go to those accounts and change the password as well because if they figure they get into one account with that username, password, email address, then maybe they'll try Amazon, maybe they'll try Walmart, 
Kohl's, other stores that are online to see if that's your same username and password uh, there as well. Do not use the same password for all accounts. Strong passwords are easy to remember but hard to guess. I am smileyphase 2 b 29 uh, this is, a, this is a, an idea for password that says 10 characters and says, I'm happy to be 29 exclamation point and you know, I wish someone says. So they basically have turned, I'm happy to be, uh, I'm happy to be 29 and then here they change it into a password using the I A M uh, colon open parentheses two letter B two nine exclamation point. Okay. So instead of making it something kind of obscure, it's kind of a, a sentence, isn't it? It's okay to write down your passwords, just keep them away from your computer and mix them with other numbers and letters so it's not apparent that it's a password. Okay. So imagine throwing in some X's, Z's, some A's in there. So you know what's not supposed to be in there. Then if they try to type in exactly the way it is written, they will get an error message and they go, oh man, well I guess it's not their password anymore. Have fun, uh, have fun with known short codes or sentences or phrases to be or not to be. Uh, this one says to be or not to be. There you go with the letters and stuff. You can also write a tip sheet which will give you a clue to remember your password but doesn't actually contain your password on it. Okay. For example, um, in the example above, your tip sheet might be to be, comma, or not to be. Okay, but it's not the actual um, password in any way. Don't tell anyone your password. Your trusted friend uh, now might be your friend, may not be your friend in the future. Now this might go for a little bit of a younger set, but it does happen. Keep your password safe by keeping them to yourself. Okay. Uh, as a tech person, I'll do gadget help and stuff, and people are like, "Well, here is my password." It's like, no. You do your password, you type it in your device. I don't want to know your password. <laughs> I don't want to know your password. Uh, okay. So depending on the sensitivity of the information being protected, you should change your passwords periodically and avoid reusing a password for at least one year. Okay. Do use at least eight characters or lowercase and uppercase letters. A lot of these um, websites actually force us to do this. Okay. Remember, the more you, the merrier. Okay. So if you can make it really long, you know, a little bit obscure. In our other class, we talk about try not to make it family members' names. Okay. It's really not a good idea to do that. Maybe even throw some numbers in there. So let's say you decide to make it a family member's name and the day they were born and the year they were born. That's just not that great idea. Okay. So try to mix it up, uh, you know, if you did want to do that, maybe the month in there, maybe some obscure number, maybe the year that you created this password, okay? So think about that, mixing it, maybe even doing something backwards in a way. Now one great thing to do is we actually have a list here of Norton Password Generator, okay? It actually will help generate passwords and it actually has a, a suggestion where it lists uh, like a mostly most known used uh, most passwords people use. Don't let your password be the word password. Okay, one two three four five six. No, don't do that. Uh, QWERTY like the keyboard. Don't always use the same password. Don't let it be easy, something someone could check. Don't be the person in the movie where the spy comes into their office and they're trying to guess the password and they look at pictures at their desk. Okay, not the wife's name, it's the dog's name. Rufus, Rufus uh, 2020. All right, I'm in the computer. So don't let, it be, don't let that be it, okay? Have a strong password. Maybe use a password generator similar to this. Maybe even add extra things on here. You don't want that many characters. I said at least eight. There you go. Okay, so LastPass is, a, is an app that you can install. There's a free version, the paid version. I just use the free version. 
make sure that gets up to date as well and it basically creates it so you can have a, a safekeeping like a lockbox master password so anytime you log into your computer it'll pop up and say what's your master password you type that in and then it will remember all the rest of your passwords okay okay so we've covered a lot this afternoon haven't we so any questions I'll pause for a second to see if anybody has any questions Listen carefully, you might hear a little bird out the window. It's one that's being a little loud, so that's neat. Okay, so let's go back over what we've covered this afternoon. So what did we cover? We talked about safe online connection with our HTTPS, okay? Knowing your online rights, remember up to $50 if it's like a scam. Um, if it's like a scam uh, charge, so definitely keep an eye on all your banking account information. Uh, keep in charge of your online banking information, credit card, stuff like that. Know your rights online. So let's talk, we talked about different scams, ftc.gov. A website to go to especially their scam uh, you know blog that they have that goes on we talked about emailing and texting safety uh, best not to click on any links that are in a website especially if it's bank credit card information uh, and if you receive an email or a text especially if it's bank credit card information uh, that it's going to request that use them a password in some way what exactly is a VPN? We kind of covered that, kind of introduction of that, and I gave you a great link there to go to for CNET to discuss that a little bit more. We talked about cyberbullying, okay? We also talked about uh, malware, viruses, adware, and spyware, how to check for all that, how to stop malware, keeping stuff up to date, and also making sure that you scan your computer with stuff like malware software from a few different companies. We talked about password help and tips. So before we come to a close, I guess I'll ask, is there any other questions? <laughs> so any other questions? Let's see. Okay, so kind of bringing class to a close. So here Tuesday, we did our internet safety and security class. Uh, get ready for tomorrow. At 11 o'clock, I'll be live doing the internet safety and security class again at 11 o'clock. So definitely come join me for that. So the idea is that we have, we'll have it in the afternoon, have it in the morning so it can be kind of open to more people. Uh, do we do any classes at night? No, we don't do any classes at night. <laughs> uh, but at 2.30, uh, we'll actually be doing a video creating basics class. So that's a lot of fun. We're going to be using the free photo apps uh, software that comes free with Windows 10. You may not even know that there's a video editor in there. Uh, we've done that class the first time already this month. This will be the second time doing it. So we'll be working on three different projects. So if you ever want to do a slideshow, some video editing on there and it's a lot of fun okay I like video editing it's very creative and we'll talk about that as well adding special effects 3d models you can add a dinosaur in there if you wanted to make it snow in your video uh, kind of fun and then on Thursday we're going to be doing a double gadget help in the morning and a gadget help in the afternoon so I'll be here live uh, waiting just for questions if I don't get any questions, I'll also be talking about free resources here from the library and kind of going over all that stuff. It's a drop-in, so definitely feel free to stop by uh, between those hours. 
11 o'clock to 1 o'clock, and then 2.30 to 4.30. Definitely share with friends or family. Um, like I said, it's, you know, uh, through the library, all my classes are completely free because I teach for the library. Uh, right now, we're not doing any on-ground classes. Uh, recent uh, post from the library that's on the Facebook page gives a little bit more specific information about when the, when the library is open. But again, it states that there are no programs going on in the library, no ch kid programs, no online classes, of course, and no um, study rooms excuse me, are available. So do realize that and that information is, is more on their website. Here's a, well, we just covered that, so I'll kind of skip over that. Just realize that there's lots of other classes here on our YouTube channel that are available to play, share, and uh, also uh, view as well. Do realize that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available, which is awesome. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Of course, you can call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. with questions or contact us through Facebook as well. Don't forget to like our Facebook pages for updates and information about our library, what's going on, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, this channel that you're watching right now. Do realize to, to post questions in the chat, to like, or to subscribe, you do have to be logged into YouTube. And, well, hang on, my little graphic should be dancing around. There we go. Uh, if you're looking for our YouTube channel, you're on the YouTube channel right now. But search YouTube for GCHRL videos. That's the name of our channel. That's the easiest way to find it. So basically, that does it for our class for today. Does any other questions? All right, well, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed class. Please share it with friends or family. Now it's a little bit of overcast. I think it's supposed to rain on and off a little bit. Hope you'll get to go outside and walk around some uh, without getting uh, rained on. And maybe you got some other warmer days coming after the, the tropical storm hurricanes uh, go through and stuff. So stay safe, uh, learn something every day, and hopefully see y'all tomorrow. Uh, with this class again or with the video editing class. It's a lot of fun. So have a great day. I'll see you guys again uh, soon. Bye.